As the country continues to grapple with the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, two Catholic health care groups are hosting a digital conference tomorrow to address some of those issues as well as religious freedom. Joining me now on Skype to talk more about this is Lewis Brown, executive director of Christ Medicus Foundation, which is co-hosting tomorrow's event along with the Catholic Medical Association. Lewis, welcome back. Great to see you. Uh, great to be with you. Thank you. Well, before we get to talking about what's happening tomorrow, I want to talk about the title of the conference. You're calling it A Cause for Hope, Catholic Healthcare and Religious Freedom in the Face of Crisis. Can you talk a little bit more about that and why you decided to make that the focus of the conference? Right. It's important that we as Catholics look at everything with the eyes of faith. Folks are going through, myself included, a lot of suffering for a lot of different reasons. People, A lot of people have passed away. Uh, from uh, the coronavirus, COVID-19. Uh, other folks are experiencing extraordinary uh, human carnage from all of the economic loss that's occurred in our country. Uh, even though uh, we have experienced all of the suffering, uh, we believe in a God, we believe in a resurrection, uh, we have uh, faith, we have hope. And so we look at the eyes of faith and we see the supernatural blessings that God gives us uh, in the mass and the sacraments, the power of the Holy Spirit, but we also see the natural blessings the Lord has given us in Catholic health care, uh, which is the best health care in the United States, uh, an army of physicians, doctors, nurses, epidemiologists, health care leaders uh, that can provide a true uh, voice for this public health crisis and help us in discernment with the Lord uh, to go forward and to protect the health and safety uh, of our uh, families, of our uh, selves of our communities uh, and to get through this. And so we think that that together is an extraordinary cause for hope. Yeah, and healthcare is still very much center stage as we continue to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic, as you mentioned. And as Catholics, there are some very important ethical issues that we grapple with, whether it's caring for the sick or the search for treatments. Can we talk about that? Sure. I think that's, that's a big issue. Um, we have to recognize that much of the global health apparatus um, around the world uh, has beliefs that they advance that are gravely contrary uh, to Catholic social teaching, whether it's at the about uh, beliefs about uh, the beginning of life or the end of life, belief about familial and parental rights, uh, belief about uh, the, the truths of the human person, uh, beliefs about what should or should not be in a vaccine. So those are all issues uh, that we have to consider what's going into any potential vaccine, how is it being produced, uh, how is it being distributed, uh, are families having appropriate access to the loved ones who may have COVID, may be in a difficult situation, are patients having access uh, to the sacraments, um, are people with disabilities or that are older and elderly uh, considered to be seniors, are they having uh, appropriate treatment, of receiving appropriate care, or are they experiencing some level of discrimination because they have a disability? or because of their age. So those are all things we have to remain vigilant about uh, and that we have to uh, advocate at the federal, at the state level, uh, uh, if in the courts, if necessary, uh, through uh, grassroots organizing efforts and through just uh, civil communication uh, with our public health officials, with our state and local and federal leaders to make sure that uh, human dignity for everyone uh, is being protected at every single level, at every step of the way. The two uh, are, are not... Uh, mutually exclusive. I know that you're also going to be taking a look at religious freedom at the conference. Uh, what do you think are the important issues that need to be addressed and, and how do you think we can do it? Right. I think there's two big issues. First, you see with the, this very serious coronavirus, with this public health crisis, uh, as serious as it is, we see state and local officials in parts of the country using this crisis as an opportunity to illegitimately and unjustly unjustly infringe on religious freedom. Um, we also saw in the last few weeks, so that's that's one issue. And so we have to make sure that uh, that we communicate to our civil leaders that public health and uh, religion and freedom of religion can coexist and actually mutually, mutually buttress each other uh, so that we can flourish as a society. That's number one. Number two, uh, within the last few weeks, we saw a series of Supreme Court decisions. One of them was really bad. That was the Bostock decision. But several of them were very good, including the Espinoza decision on Catholic schools and particularly the Little Sisters of the Poor decision. Uh, as good as the victory of the Little Sisters of the Poor was at the Supreme Court to say that uh, they have 
a right to exercise the religious freedom and conscience in their own health care plan. Um, we have uh, the potential of a future presidential administration, uh, future state actions that could roll all of these gains on religious freedom back. We have to main, remain vigilant on religious freedom in this public health crisis, but also in protecting, defending, and advancing more than ever before as a country, religious freedom uh, in health care as we go forward and understand what is the future of health care in the United States after this pandemic. Well, Lewis, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate thanks. you taking the time to speak with us. Lewis Ron, Executive Director of the Christ Medicus Foundation. Thanks again, Lewis. Thank you.